الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our treaties نواخذ الاسلام we spoke in the previous past two to three sittings about the eighth Naqid min the waqid al-Islam and it's the statement of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala when he said Al-Thamin mudahrat al-mushrikeen wa ma'awanatihim ala al-muslimin wa dalil qawluhu ta'ala wa man yatawallahum minkum fa innuhum minhum inna allaha la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimeen This is the statement uh, the eighth Naqid min the waqid al-Islam where Muhammad ibn Wahhab said uh, that anyone who assists or aids the polytheists against Muslims has disbelieved. And the evidence for the statement is the statement of Allah the Almighty, whoever from amongst you takes them as allies, then he is surely one of them, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoers. The, so we've reached the point in discussing this Naqid min Nawaq al-Islam as, as we know that there are many details and we discussed some of the statements of Allama bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala and the divisions where sometimes it takes you out of the fold of Islam sometimes it can be a, a major sin and in another category there is no problem with it we're going to look into some further tafsil from the four imams and from the salaf and then some of the more uh, modern uh, scholars that we have it today, like the Hayat al Kibar ulama and ulama like Sheikh Salih bin Fozan, Hafidhuhum Allah Ta'ala Jami'an. So, the position of the Salaf and later scholars regarding this issue. Regarding the verse, whoever from amongst you takes them as allies, then he is surely one of them. Abu Fadl al Alusi said, it refers to a real disbeliever like them. And it was mentioned on uh, from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that this is if they love them because they are Jews and Christians. All of the four Imams, so this is an, another mas'ala, another issue that we've come across. What about the Muslim spy? What if a Muslim, as recently it's become widespread on the internet, a person that I know personally who is... Uh, come out and said that he worked for the CIA and all these kind of things and he left Islam when we look at these things let's see what the Salaf used to say would say about spying spying for disbelievers on Muslims here's the, the qawl all the four Imams Abu Hanifa Malik Shafi'i Ahmed, all believed that a Muslim spy who gave secrets to the disbelievers was still a Muslim. And this was the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim. Likewise, Imam Hafiz Ibn Hajr related Imam Al-Tahawi said there was a consensus that a Muslim spy should not be killed, which shows he is not considered a disbeliever. The point being here, our desires show us one thing. We think this is, a, this is a great sin, this is a great evil. But it's important to know the minhaj, the methodology of the Salaf al in these issues. To not follow our desires and what some modern day takfiris and those people who mustinid ilal khawarij fi ittaqad wa ma'amalat ma'al muslimin, that those people who are the neo takfiris and those people who are uh, tested with this disease in their heart and their disease in their aqidah of destroying and, and spreading wanton violence amongst the various societies, regardless of whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim. And this brings to mind, in my research, I've come across a statement, and I put it in my research. As my research was about takfir and the khawarij and their effect on modern day uh, groups. This was my master's thesis. And one of the statements I recall was about Faisal, Faisal of Jamaica, or it was from him, one of the people, he used to reside in the UK, uh, one of the major spreaders of this evil call of takfir 
And when we, when we discuss this, we're not talking about something that's because we don't like that call. It's because this call is based on ignorance. No matter how many ayats he tries to, to quote, no matter how many cut and pasting he does from Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, no matter how much uh, aqwal he brings here and there, subhanAllah, jahil is jahil. It doesn't matter. Ignorance is ignorance. Uh, ta'wil and ta'wil fasid, you know, misinterpreting the nusus is misinterpreting the nusus. There's just no way around it. Wa'iyadhimillah. So here we've given a statement of, of Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, uh, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al Islam ibn al Qayyum, Imam Al Tahawi, Imam Hafiz ibn Hajr. What do you need after that? who related consensus and held consensus. These are the four madhabs that they, uh, in fiqh, that they had consensus that the Muslim spy should not be killed. What does uh, Faisal say? Faisal says, he said that even if uh, a spy, he fled and he went to Buckingham Palace, you could go in there and kill him. This is what this, this man said. This shows you the ignorance of him cutting and pasting. You learn a little bit of Arabic. You make some fatawa here, you make some fatawa there, and you and you sidun fil ard. You you cause facade around the earth. How many communities have been destroyed from taking and following duat like this? People who call to the hellfire, people who call to Jahannam, as the Prophet sallallahu described them in the hadith of Hudayfa bin Yaman. Duat ala Abu Abu Jahannam. Their duat ala Abu Abu Jahannam. They are uh, duat, people who call. What do they call to? They call to Jahannam. They don't call to khair. They don't call to sunnah. They don't call to Allah, the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala minhaj rabbani. They don't call to the methodology of ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah. They call to the methodology of the khawarij, who the Prophet ﷺ described, and said that they al khawarij hum kilab al nar. And as how many people do we know in our societies, unfortunately, who are spreading this false aqidah and this false minhaj, calling people to the hellfire, in fact, calling people to destruction and to destroying others. So, in fact, what are they calling people to? To destroying their dunya and the, the other people's dunya and their akhirah. Wa'iyadhim illa min dhalika. So, that's why I always take time out to speak about the Khawarij, speak about the Takfiris, speak about those people who hold this Aqidah and this Minhaj, because this is Khatir Jiddin, it's very dangerous. And I know many people personally who have fallen because, because of that, because they got caught up, they didn't listen. We tried to give them the Sunnah, but they took falsehood. We tried to give them the Sunnah, they took Minhaj al-Takfir. We tried to give them the Sunnah, they took the Khawarij methodology. Wa'iyadhim billah min dhalika. They said, no, Bin Laden's great. They said, no, this guy's great. No, we're going to go to Afghanistan. No, we're going to do this. No, we're going to do this. And where did it get them? It destroyed. Some of them, they're hardly even Muslim. They're hardly even Muslim. What's left of them after the, the, the FBI and others dealt with them? And it isn't because of that, but it's because their methodology was wrong. What they were calling to was evil. They were calling people to destroy Muslims. They were calling people to make takfir of other Muslims. They were making the Muslims' blood halal. And they were making innocent people's blood lawful for them and their properties, and so forth. So the four Imams had consensus that even the Muslim spy was not a disbeliever, and he was not to be killed. So what is the Ta'liqat? Imam Tahawi said, there was consensus that a Muslim spy should not be killed, which shows he is not considered a disbeliever. Imam Sa'di explained the above verse by saying, The complete tawalli necessitates changing their religion, whereas the minor tawalli is a means to the major tawalli. Then it has different levels until one becomes a slave from amongst them. Shaykh Muhammad Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah ta'ala, explained, the apparent meaning of the verse is that whoever loves disbelievers intentionally, by choice, desiring them, is a disbeliever like them. A rais uh, elucidates, so he, he does not... So he did not declare the general takfir. Instead, he compared it to something related to creed or belief in the heart, loving the disbelievers by desiring them. The committee of the major scholars in Saudi Arabia were asked, What is the meaning of the verse? Do not love a people that the, that the anger of Allah is upon. 
This is the verse, this is an, an uh, Mumtahina, verse 13. And it was the meaning of, uh, and what is the meaning of wilaya, meaning guardianship or loving them? Is it considered loving them to visit them, speak and laugh with them? So this was the question to the major committee to the major the committee of major scholars they answered Allah the almighty has prohibited the believers from loving the jews and other than them from amongst the disbelievers and allegiance love affection brotherhood and support and taking them as protectors even if they are not fighting the muslims the almighty says you will not find the people who believe in Allah in the last day making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger, even though they were their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred. For such has uh, he has written faith in their hearts and has strengthened them with guidance from himself. And he will admit them to gardens under which rivers flow to dwell therein. Allah is pleased with them and they with him. They are the party of Allah. Verily, it is the party of Allah that will be successful. In al Hezbollah, Huma Muflihun. Allah also says, O you who believe, take not as protectors those outside your religion, since they will not fail to do their best to, to corrupt you. They desire to harm you severely. Hatred has already appeared from their mouths, but what their hearts concealed conceal is far worse indeed we have made plain to you the verses if you understand lo you are the ones who love them but they love you not then Allah says but if you remain patient and become pious not the least harm will their cunning do to you surely Allah surrounds all that they do this is the meaning according to the text of the Quran and the Sunnah Allah the Almighty did not prohibit the believers from being humane and receiving kindness from those who did not make war with them and exchanging permissible mutual benefits with them like buying and selling giving and accepting gifts Allah says Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of your religion nor drove you out of your homes verily Allah loves those who deal with you equity it is only as regards those who fought against you on account of your religion and have driven you out of your homes and helped to drive you out that Allah forbids you to befriend them. And whosoever will befriend them, then such are the wrongdoers. In short, working with disbelievers for worldly purposes and necessity and having natural love for one's family and kin from non-Muslims is not disbelief nor is it sinful. However, loving and aiding disbelievers in order to harm Muslims with the intent to do so or to assist them in disbelief is disbelief. Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan was asked about some uh, Muslims who apparently love and assist disbelievers. And the point here in the question, apparently love. He responded by saying, I do not believe that there is a Muslim that loves disbelievers. However, you explain al-mu'alat other than its real meaning. Therefore, if he loves them, then he is either ignorant or not a Muslim or from the hypocrites. As for a Muslim, he does not love the disbelievers. But there are some things that you classify as mu'alat and it is not mu'alat. And this is the case with the takfiris. They love this. They love to say the governments are loving the disbelievers and they're doing this for certain deeds and certain types of activities that they do uh, with non-Muslim governments. And this is a, a very dangerous uh, uh, trend amongst the takfiris, and that's why Ahl Sunnah, we have to be on heather, we have to be cautious, and we have to warn against this, this false belief, and we have to seek knowledge so that we know and understand the details. based on Kitab wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Minhaj Salaf So then Shaykh Salah bin Fosan said, some things that you classify as mu'alat, and it, and it is not mu'alat, like buying and selling from disbelievers, or giving them a gift, or accepting one, this is all permissible. This is not from Mu'alat, but instead from worldly matters for mutual benefit, like contracting a disbeliever for work. And this is exchanging mutual benefit. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam contracted Abdullah ibn uh, Ar Ariqat al-Laythi to guide them on the Hijra road. And he and this man was uh, a disbeliever. He sought his support and experience on the road so it is permissible to do so. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam benefited from this mushrik, used him for a worldly benefit to have him help uh, him and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala on, uh, on the road. And this shows us 
as the, the, the Sheikh said, he sought his support and experience on the road, so it is permissible to do so. This is the hukum that we extract from these nasus. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with tawfiq and bless us with ikhlas, with abat. And thus we have uh, ended, we have finished the eighth uh, nullifier and in the next stars we will move on to the ninth and then the tenth and then we will finish the idnillah ta'ala this treatise and may Allah bless it to be a benefit on our scales of good deeds in this life as well as the hereafter wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam